And we are live. Hello, I'm Caitlin Gilson, Director of the Certificate in Holistic Landscape Design at Bastyr University. We have two campuses in Seattle and San Diego with a variety of programs in the natural health, arts, and sciences. And today I'm speaking with Kelly Elizabeth Tivnan, uh, who is a alumni of the Certificate of Holistic Landscape Design and also co-founder of Living Room Landscape. And she co-founded that with Jay Paganini. She graduated in 2001 and is here to give us a little update on what she's been doing uh, since she's graduated. So thanks for joining us, Kel. Thank you. It's good to see you. Happy summer. Thanks. Um, it's been really exciting to just have this opportunity to catch up with you and everyone out there. So greetings. Yeah. So I'm curious, your background, you came from this art and design background. And then from that world, you came into the program. And what really drove your transition, that shift in your professional focus? And why did you feel like CHLD was a good fit for you? Um, well, it's never just one thing. Um, it was a combination of relocating back to Cascadia um, and the pandemic, of course, and um, realizing that the industry from um, what I once was very involved with, which was interior design and conceptual art, um, was just not um, available to me being back in Seattle and not having a large community here um, to support that and like help me get kind of into that, um, get back into that landscape. But um, I was speaking with a friend who I recommended Bastier to, um, and after I talked to him, I was like, I should look into Bastier as this um, great resource for this area. And immediately holistic landscape design popped up on the homepage. And I was like, what is that? And I've always felt very connected to nature. I have a lot of gardeners in my family and it just was very intriguing. And also at the same time, like sounded like something that I needed to investigate just as a person, not necessarily even knowing how that would pan out career-wise for me. It was just something that I knew I needed to um, learn more about. So that was that was kind of the beginning. And then, yeah, it it just, I think we had our interview. It was very easy to just like feel like that was a good decision for me and just put aside the fact that like this is a pivot point and um I could still intertwine all of my past lives into this current career and and that's what I'm doing and it feels really amazing to be able to say that this was like everything led up to this and like even relocating back here and being able to facilitate you know native plants, future native plants, like the idea that I'm spatially designing things and places for people to enjoy, animals to enjoy. Um, and then I think the permaculture part of the program as well really um, was important to me just being like an environmentally uh, aware designer. Um, and those principles just echoed in the way that I would be integrating my work for say an indoor client as well. Like, where does this come from? Like, what's the footprint? How do we make this maybe uh, more efficient or whatnot? So it felt really natural and it was very lucky, <laughs> very lucky. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I've been really impressed with how you've just hit the ground running after graduation and started your design firm and you've really jumped into kind of our landscape design horticulture field in Seattle and started to network and uh, participation in the Northwest Flower and Garden Show. Um, right. And I'm really yeah. curious about what that experience was like for you. How has it been kind of becoming part of that field in Seattle? Um, it's very challenging. It It's um, a lot of learning as always. And I think the Flower and Garden Show was this I'm embarrassed to say I had never gone, you know, like I was, a, I lived in Berlin for over a decade um, until 2019. And um, 
I had never been to the Flower and Garden Show. So when Jesse Bloom did that lecture for our class and, and like suggested it to our class as an opportunity to, you know, be involved, I had no idea. So for me, when I signed up, um, the Lloyd, who is a dear heart, he, he runs the show. Um, he was like, who's helping you? And I was like, um, I have no idea. Like, do I need help? And he was like, yes, you can't do this by yourself. And I was like, oh gosh. And luckily, um, I had met Jay a year before and we had been very much inspired to, you know, collaborate on, on multiple types of spaces and, and focus actually on healing. That was always our like common ground in the beginning. Um, and still very much so. Um, but it was just like, Hey, Jay, I can't do this alone. Would you want to join forces and create a garden with me? And we did it. And then Lloyd actually recommended that we use the the Flower Garden Show as a platform to debut our our garden and our business together as one thing. Because you know I had started a different business and Jay had her own business, and it just felt like okay, if we're going to do this, let's just see how we go. And it's oh, I mean you know gardening also is just one massive experiment. So that's how we treat it, and it's been yeah, really exciting to just have people see what we do and feel what we do also like everything is very curated and um conceptual and thoughtful and we really like working you know together and with local suppliers and nurseries and it's just been baby steps but it feels quite fast also but like at a tempo that is manageable for both of us. And um, we're super inspired and we really lean on each other. And that's very lucky to have like that kind of partnership. I feel so happy that she is a part of my business and I'm a part of her business. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like partnership has been really important to you in your business. And then you've totally. kind of had some support of some people in the field as you're yeah. entering it. Yeah, I think one other really beautiful thing about the Flower and Garden Show is it becomes family. And, you know, we did that first year. And then the second year, we were there also this last year. And, you know, we want to be there next year. And I just think it's kind of this opportunity to just see people that are in your industry and you know watch people interact with a space because you know when you give someone uh, a space you don't necessarily see them enjoy it and it's really nice to just have that you know as much as it's like out of context because it's an indoor garden and it's super su like fast and you know like chaos but um, it's really nice to just get that reception. And, you know, we got awards. It's very, very much um, like we feel like we're in the right place at the right time and doing the best that we can. And it's just like, yeah, it's just going to keep going. I feel. Yeah, I'm glad it's been such an affirming kind of experience for you. And I know my yeah. current students have really enjoyed participating with you and kind of seeing what that oh, process yeah. is. We, and yeah, volunteers are super important. Please, yeah, keep sending them. <laughs> yeah. So I know you're in a stage in your business where you're starting to expand, right? You are mm -hmm. developing a new site incarnation with a demonstration garden and potentially like a boutique nursery down the line. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I would love to. This is um, very exciting to be our own client. Uh, we found a cottage that's just off the main, av like Tolt Avenue in Carnation, Washington. And there's so much charm and modesty and humbleness. And it just feels like such a beautiful place to just start something fresh. Um, it's also um, very, yeah, rural still. So I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to just bring plants to people that, you know, have already something happening in their gardens, but maybe want something more specific. Um, but we, we're going to use that as our headquarters for our design studio so we can invite clients, um, have samples, walk through specimens that we want to experiment. Like I mentioned before, we're always wondering, like, is a deer or a bunny going to eat this? Like, 
you know, how does it react to the winters here? You know, there's just so much that we can learn. And then these informed decisions, then we pass on to our clients and our future gardens. It's um really, I mean, I'm trying to kind of hold back tears. It's really exciting. I, I can't, I mean, stay tuned, but we're we're really honored to be a part of that community. They've all welcomed us with open arms. They're, everyone feels like, you know, they're just very welcoming to the idea of having a design studio that's catering to plants and, and environmental awareness as well. And it's just like, Jay and I have always just wanted to facilitate this concept of nurture and nature. And that, that means we get to build off of that at that place and it'll be very site specific and offering plants to people and talk to people about plants we just want everyone to have like feel empowered and yeah it's just I think it's natural we you know and the pandemic's pretty much you know whatever over so we can invite people to spaces and feel like this is um yeah a, a spot to do workshops and sell plants we definitely also need you know uh, a location to house plants that we collect and squirrel away for our clients so you know sometimes we need months to just like get all of our plants in and you know in our inventory um, before we install so it'll be nice to just have a location there that is able to facilitate that many plants yeah so it'll be yeah. a hodgepodge but it'll be really exciting and I can't wait to have you out It'll be really fun. I'd love to come yeah, see it. It sounds like a really exciting aspect to have a yeah. place where you're grounded. It can really grow from. Yeah, we really needed an anchor. You know, like everyone, it's great to work from home. It's so convenient. But also at the same time, you know, we need we need to have just a little bit more of a, I don't even want to call it professionalism. I, I just, I feel like it's just a really nice thing to just say, I'm going to work and like, I'm going to check on my baby plants and like, I want to invite my friends over or we can have events. So, and like, just, I think the community part when we're all isolated is it, it fails. And, you know, we need, we need that, you know, we're very, Jay and I try to be as social as possible, excuse me about these chipmunks, by the way, if they're like, um, <laughs> coming through the microphone yeah yeah and I really like kind of going with that thread of empowerment that you were talking mm -hmm. about where mm -hmm. you're empowering your clients you're feeling empowered in this field as well mm -hmm. and I'm curious like how participating in the CHLD program might have helped along your route in terms of making you um, feel prepared for this current track that you're on yeah, I mean, there's probably never not a day that I don't reflect on something that you or Dave or our class taught us. Um, I, I personally think that the curriculum has uh, enabled me and empowered me to feel confident enough and still curious enough, um, you know, between the internship that I had with Lindsay and um, you know, I think even just the, the practicum of it and just knowing like the slow building of, of knowing that, you know, it's, it's its own thing and you don't maybe know what it's going to look like in the end. I mean, like metaphorically, I mean, all kind of lives are gardens, you know, like we're, we're growing, we're, in phases where we're seasonal, whatever it might be. But like in the end, I do think the combination of the medicinal and like learning about taking care of yourself and being able to extend that into like, even if someone doesn't necessarily want to grow their own herbs or their own medicine, it's really nice to be able to just like sneak that in and be like, if you wanted to, you can make a tea out of this. You know, I just think that doesn't just like a beautiful bonus. Um, and like, there's just so many plants. Obviously I'm still learning heaps of plant names all the time, but like, that was a big learning curve for me, as you know, like that's a, another language to learn. Um, but I feel like I'm tapping into, you know, Bastier's education daily you know just very reflective and not just even gratitude just like wow what was that species or 
what what's the best way to communicate that, you know, in a proposal or like on a site plan or, you know, there's just so many details and I could really go deep probably on that because in the end it is about communication and how you um, portray your ideas to your client that in the end of the day also kind of gets you the job. I think personality also helps, but your ideas and how they come through. I feel like we learned a lot about that communication throughout the program. And that was, um, yeah, that makes you successful and again, confident. So that that was, I think, in a nutshell, all, all the great things that came from the program. Yeah, uh, well, I'm really great. glad <laughs> to hear that it's serving you well and yeah. everything that yeah. you've brought to the world as a result of that. I'm so happy. I'm very, yeah, I'm, like I said, I could hold back tears sometimes. I just feel so lucky to be able to be doing this. And are there any like words of advice you might give to prospective incoming CHLD students that they should know? I was thinking about that. Like, you know, I feel like there's so much information that you and Dave give us and, you know, elective programs that are amazing, obviously. Um, shout out to Jen. Um, but you know, like we we have um I think finding a balance and like maybe not getting too overwhelmed, um, but just like taking piece by piece and just understanding that if it doesn't necessarily seem applicable now it will sneak up later when you're practicing and you'll realize why you were told to learn this. Um, or, um, and again, like find your people, you know, like I think that's another important thing that we, um, I don't know. It's, I think best year is a very special and unique campus and offers, you know, this, abundance of learning for for people and a different type than a normal university um so you're already kind of lumped together with probably a lot of like-minded people but as you go like keep keep those people that you connected with close so that you can help one another later um like that was another reason why I was thinking about you know opening this up is like getting some of our classmates together and like everyone has a, a niche and I, you know, like would love to invite people that I got to know through the program over and do workshops or like, you know, have an afternoon that they're just hanging out in the garden with us and doing experiments. I think that facilitating that would, is a great goal, but yeah, go, may, I don't know, like even go slow. Somehow I also think like just retain what you, what you need at that time. And then just know that it's back there when you need it for the future because it is so much information and there's so many ways that you can practice it later, you know? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you're really still integrating a lot of the permaculture principles into your life, the oh, go totally. slow and expand and weaving all those connections. And that sounds great. That's a day. That's also a daily thing. You know, like every, everything kind of boils down to that even before the program for me. I mean, that's why it was also so beneficial to just have those, coupled together for for me like under one umbrella because yeah that's super valuable and like we really need people forward thinking like that and just practicing it I mean actually somebody I don't know if we want if we have time but um somebody recently um it was it was a I can't remember which volunteer was at the flower and garden show and she asked how I practice permaculture with the designs and you know um I think it's just kind of like this way of life and you don't necessarily have to preach it but you just slip it in and it's just there and it's doing its thing and and if someone wants you to tell them more about it you're able to explain why you made those decisions but it's just automatic for me in the design process and and Jay as well you know, she, she also supports and, and wants to be present in that, um, forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, thanks, Cal. Is there anything coming up, any events or anything you want to share? Well, I mean, if people want to like follow along on the journey, they can. Um, all the socials are, are present somewhere, probably on the YouTube stuff. But I feel like um, people should just be in touch. And if they have questions or if they want to come out and visit, we are still very much under construction at our studio space we are hoping that maybe in September we can kind of like have a soft opening or a launch of some sort um but yeah we have many residential projects in the works for autumn um we're I mean kind of booked out through through autumn mm -hmm. and then we'll see what you know winter is a pretty quiet time um maybe have some time off you know um <laughs> Yeah, and then it gets going again with Flower and Garden Show in February, and then springtime is, you know, our time for installs and whatnot. So yeah, it'll be yeah really nice to just get those things happening in three D and not just on paper with people, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, really see the dream brought to life. Exactly, which has been really incredible to see with you transitioning yeah. from a student to someone just being a boss and really yeah. running. <laughs> like this firm that encapsulates everything you're about really the beauty and the ethics combined is really incredible yeah, yeah. well said that's perfect yeah, yeah. thank you thanks so much, so much for joining me today it was really fun to catch up yes. um I hope you have a great afternoon you as well thanks again Bye. cheers